Hello, everybody. I'm just waiting for more people to join. Hello and good evening. We are back at it again. It's another wonderful evening uh, for us to uh, have the conversations that we've been having. Oh, I see Ken is already online. I do love meet somebody punctual. Um, so hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm just trying to type out the name of our session so I can pin it. Give me two seconds. Ken Noir Dio Booth. There we go. Awesome stuff. Now I'll pin you. Pin comment. Okay, great. So anybody who tunes in now knows what we're doing today. Um, hi, David. Hola, Shola. Um, the bells, UK fans locked in. Everybody is locked in. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm Vimbai. Welcome to another wonderful edition of the Future Conversations. You know the drill by now. We've been having these incredibly insightful conversations with alumni of the Future Africa uh, Awards over the years. So these are people who've won in various disciplines. Uh, we've spoken to actor Ali Nuhu. We've spoken to uh, Jeff, uh, Jake, excuse me a fodu who's an an advocate and an activist um so today we're speaking to somebody who i think cuts across so many disciplines he himself is uh most well known for his work in in the art space so he's a multidisciplinary award-winning artist and he won the future africa prize for visual and applied arts in 2019 um, but that was after being nominated for the same category in 2018. Uh, he has also won the bridgman studio award um, and gender equality african culture and black power are some of the focus of ken wadiogu's work so it's apt it's bang on target with regards to everything currently going on in this season across the world. So without further ado, let me get our guest uh, online. Uh, okay, let's hope technology doesn't act too... Hmm, what's going on here? Oh, well, nope. Oh. That is not supposed to happen. Okay, there we go. Something is supposed to happen. Okay, guys, sorry, I'm having a bit of a situation. There we go, finally. Okay. Uh, so I've just uh, gotten Ken on. And I'm just waiting for him to join. So we're going to talk about... Hey, Ken, how are you doing? Hey, I'm good. What's how good? Are you? Oh man, you're all I'm, I'm so glad you've got energy. You're, you're, you're <laughs> in a positive mood. Yeah. Because, uh, being on social media, especially this week, has been a little bit grim. It's been very somber. So it's refreshing to yeah. you know see somebody yeah. come in with you know, good energy. <laughs> yeah, we, we we need to have that energy. We need to have good energy, no matter what happens. So no matter yeah. what happens. So where are you at the moment? And uh, tell me a little bit about your lockdown experience. Uh, I'm in my studio. Um, I, I work, I have a studio around um, Yaba. That's where I work. Um, and the lockdown experience has just been an opportunity for me to be, work, to be a workaholic. You understand? Uh -huh. There is no excuse. I, uh, and you know, aside even the lockdown, there are a lot of um, things to speak about, and you know, there's there's a lot of conversation to there, there are a lot of conversations that need to be had that that needs to be had, and this lockdown gave me the opportunity to try and have this conversation through my art, through live videos, and you know, different forms. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you know, you're definitely right. So many conversations, um, especially over the past few days it seems things just skyrocketed yes. you know so many events both home and abroad um but i mean let's get straight into it as what what have you what's been the impact for you um with regards to all these things uh happening well should i say you know breaking it on the news because these are things that have been happening 
um, but all of a sudden there's a massive wave of coverage and awareness. So how has that impacted you? Uh, first of all, I think the media is now much more aware um, because of the lockdown. So people are at home now and they've been accustomed to using the, uh, the mobile device. And one of the biggest um, activist platform in the world is social media. So it's been a tool for people. And, you know, not being, um, I, I remember sometimes, you know, I wake up and, like, and my, my students are like, ah, have you seen the latest news? And I'm like, what news? And they're like, you know, rape happened or police brutality happened somewhere. But now you get to see it um, firsthand. You get, to, you're aware of it. You, you are conscious of it. These things really happen. And because they really happen, you're now trying to, you know, find a way to ask questions, yeah. right? And that's what's happening at the moment. That's what's happening in Nigeria. That's what's happening in America. That's what's happening around the world. Everybody seems to be asking this question now. And it is... I think this is most, the most important time to ask the question, and this is the most important time to find answers to it. So that, that's what's been going on of late. And me being part of you know, the age group, me being part of that conversation, me being a, a victim of you know, the police brutality, or um, having friends who are victims of rape cases, you know, that spurs up, up, that thought of something inside me to want to you know, be part of that conversation. You know, there, there is something that they say, you know, when you, say some, when you say something over and over again, it's just words. But when you start acting on it while saying it, then it becomes something tangible. So that's my own way of acting on it, creating art, creating the conversation, making people aware of it. And eventually, hopefully, you know, the world will change. I didn't know that you've been a victim of police brutality. What was your experience? Yeah. Uh, I was I was I was headed for um, a program that was invited. Um, um, SME Society of Nigerian Arts um, invited me with um, Omenka Gallery for a show, and just while I was on my way, these couple of people without uniforms stopped us, packed us, we packed. They said we should come down. We we're like, okay, why are we coming down? They said, come down. I said, okay, no, I don't. I know how this thing goes. If you retaliate, something happens. So I came down. And they say, you know, show the ID card, show them ID card, show them everything. They said, I should follow the person, the, 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 the Oga, right? I should follow him on his bike while his teammates follow the car, like follow my people, like my students, inside the car, right? And we're headed to the station. While we're headed to the station, no idea. What people, no idea. Nothing. We didn't have any, um, we didn't have any reason. We didn't have any explanation oh, and then the whole... yeah right and then that stirred up something and immediately the first thing i thought of was you know my mom works at a um, national health insurance scheme which is a government um, um organized um, a government um, company if i call her into the case she's elderly probably these people would you know would understand that okay these guys are not bad guys they're actually cool guys right and i called her into the scene do you know it, it was oh my god so they eventually, uh, because of the whole one page, everybody gathered together. We watched to the station. We watched the station. We wrote a statement. They locked us up in um in a room. Opened the door and say, Ah, why are your friends? Why police? Why are your friends? And I'm like, What happened? And then you know, I'm getting feedback that you know they had to pay them off before they could let us go. And we missed the meeting. We missed the whole interview. We missed everything. And all that. All I could, think, I could think of was, you know, all you could just do was say, oh, I don't have, you know, support the police or support. You understand? It would be, it would be, if, if, you, if the police were doing well, we would actually want to support. But this, this was violence. This was anger. This was everything that I kept reading on, on, in news and, you know, seeing on newspapers. And, you know, I had to retaliate and, you know, Find a speak to the DPO. This they arrested them for um, for that, and then you know they funded the money. But then that conversation happened, and that is where you know my ego and my bond to want to even talk more about this police brutality became yeah. really you know concrete. And, and you know, judging sort of from your story, it seems you are part of the lucky group because you hear these stories with other people who 
you know, and they end in, in devastating and tragic ways, uh, just the same as it did in the United States for somebody like George Floyd, who unfortunately, yeah. you know, we had to watch this person take their last breaths and it was caught on video. Uh, but my, my question is, obviously, this has woken up a lot of things, not just in the United States, but globally. And it's touching yeah. here in Africa as well, because we are going through a lot of these experiences, but we're suffering silently. What are some of the lessons, uh, you know, you're learning from how uh, the United States and people, you know, Black uh, Americans are tackling this issue? that maybe can apply to Nigeria or to Africa, um, you know, for us to start using our voices the right way um, to, so that people, you know, are more aware that we're serious. This is, we're tired of yeah. our young boys um, always constantly being harassed unnecessarily by the police. Um, yeah. Our young women as well, we're going to get into what you, what young women are dealing with, but when we're speaking of police brutality, more often than not, it is boys who are stereotyped, who are profiled, and then go through these things. So, is there anything you you're learning um, from? Yes, the yes. And the reaction to George Floyd. Yeah. Um, so, f f first of all, um, first of all, I think one of the biggest um, power source is the media. Right. The media seems to be the largest, the biggest um, platform to, for activism, right? And I, when I mean media, I don't mean social media, I mean the people who, are, who, are, who have a job to, you know, to push a certain narrative mm -hmm. that people can read, right? I'm talking of um, huge uh, media platforms who disperse news, right? These are the main people who have the power to be able to cause change. But the problem with um, the Nigerian media that I figured out is that we are more concerned with controversy than we are concerned with trying to find change. As more, more views is good, it doesn't necessarily mean to bring up change, but the views is good, right? There are certain contents that are being created. There are certain hashtags, there are certain movements that the media has not picked up yet. Right, and nobody's taking you know, nobody's being aware of this thing. Yeah, we're, we're all aware of oh, who is the next celebrity to target, who is the next person to target, who is the next person replying to this person, right? Where there's so much control and um, 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 conversation about these things, right? In the United States, a lot of media picked it up, right? And they picked it up and they went strong with it. And then, another thing I understand, like, I'm creating a, a new series of works called. I know why case men scream, right? It was inspired by this book by... Um, Maya um, Angelou, I know. Yeah, Maya Angelou, I know, yeah. yeah. So apparently what I understood, if, if you understand the, um, the, the meaning of screaming um, in Oxford Dictionary, is basically any sort of loud emotion, emotions that turn into words, emotions that turn into um, decibels, right, to sort of reduce pain, pain felt. So I know why cavemen scream means I know why people who are captive are very violent. I know why they are looting and they are going up. So I know why they are shouting. I know why they are making so much noise. I know why the whole of the, um, every Instagram page of every white person turned black yesterday. I know why these certain things happen. But the problem is that we don't even pay attention to these things here. Right? One person is making a, a huge statement while tackling every problem that that person is saying or every, uh, every wrong statement the person is making. We're not coming together as a country to try and cause this change. So this is so my, my own conversation or my own, well, how I think the American way can influence our way is that instead of finding all the loops and all the loopholes, right, of people who are being activists against a situation. Why not join them? Why not be part of that conversation? Enough people, lots of people coming together to have a conversation is power. Right? I, I did a video, right, right where um, a, a person was in a, um, in, a, in a symbolic state, and then there was, I wrote um, we, I can't breathe on the show. And I needed people to understand the message, but a lot of people on Twitter, Nigerians, kept saying, um, 
oh, talk about what's going on in Nigeria. Don't talk about what's going on in America. Whereas, they've forgotten that exactly what's going on in America is what's going on in Nigeria. There's police brutality in Nigeria, right? The youth cannot walk. I, I can't even walk to, um, to a far distance and come back without somebody stopping me and saying, hey, come here. Where's your ID card? Do you understand? So, instead of looking for loopholes of people who are actually trying to make a change, why not join them in making a change? Why not do something? Why not use your creativity for the better? Why not use your creativity for, for greatness? I used to believe art, no matter what art it is, it either starts a conversation or it answers a question. Either one of them is asking a question, is answering a question. So if your art, if your creativity cannot do any of those, then what's your creativity for? What are you using it for? So that's where I think, you know, the American... Um, Every black American, every Af black, Af black person in diaspora has been able to tap into it. Everybody's having that conversation. White people, black people, regardless, right? But Nigeria, we need to start having these conversations for it to be better. That's right. Well, that's, you know, you said that so beautifully. You, you expressed it so fully. And I want to, you know, tap deeper into this because, uh, like you said, there's so much focus on uh, critiquing people's narrative or people's expression as they, you know, try to stand up against injustice and use their voices. And that's very obvious. And, you know, that is very loud when you start to speak of gender-based violence and, and rape, um, it, you know, especially when it involves, in fact, it doesn't matter whether it involves somebody high profile, somebody normal, you, you, you get to Twitter and, uh, you know, you see young women trying to tell their stories and how quickly they're shut down and cut down by, oh, but... Yes, know, exactly. Was, what were you wearing? Exactly. Why were you there? I wasn't really asked. So, like, yes, so like, show us the proof. Show us proof. Show us this. That's not the point. Be mm -hmm. part of the conversation. Somebody out there is listening. Somebody out there is paying attention. I, I used to tell my friends, I used to say, what made me start cutting out the physical form of people and sort of trying to draw a consciousness inside was because I felt that there was a feeling I had that the reason why violence is that happens and the reason why people kill people and people why, the reason why people rape people, maybe it's because they look at people and all they see is flesh. You see, once you understand that a person is not, a, 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 it's not the flesh, it's not the skin, a person is an energy. And once you are killing a person, you are killing an energy. And you know, Newton said, energy is neither created nor destroyed, but it, might, it can be transformed. So what are you, who are you, who gave you the, the power to kill an energy, to end an energy, to end a consciousness? So that became a big deal of my artistic um, expression, to try and re, you know, re, you know, reorganize people's mentality, to see people as not people, to see them as, as, you know, as an energy, as a consciousness, as something that is alive. Because once you see someone and aside the physical form, you can be able to see, value that person exactly how he's meant to be valued. So I think people are more concerned with the outer look, the physical form, whether it's black, whether it has dread, whether it has gears, what, what, what he's wearing. That's, that, 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 that does not in any way represent what a real uh, a human being really is. So what do we need to do, uh, you know, besides sort of, you know, there's obviously some, some sort of sensitization that needs to happen. There's a lot of education that needs to happen. But, you know, what do you think is a strategy that's going to work in our context to snap people out of, you know, being so shallow minded about the value of somebody's life, the value of trauma, if you're talking of, you know, women who've been raped and survived it, it's, their trauma is always under, underplayed. Um, and, and there's also the, the, uh, the, the loss of lives of women. You know, you, you look at Ua, look at Tina, look at, you know, the, this, the names and faces are all there. What strategy do you think will work best to, to just get people to wake up and to shake people out of it? Uh, at, at first, I think we need to recognize the fact that rape is not a mistake. Uh, mother is not a mistake. These are not mistakes. You don't mistakenly rape someone. Neither do you mistakenly kill someone. This is a choice you have decided to make. The repercussions of this choice, you should not argue with it. 
That's the first thing I think people should understand. So you, you need, we need to understand that, you know, these choices have a purpose. These choices that you have decided to make, right, in the constitution and in law, right, it is wrong. And then there are institutions that actually investigate these things and get to justice, right? Because it's not good. We're going to just keep using the hashtag and using the hashtag and using the hashtag, right? And no institution is going to come up or no institution is going to be very accessible because another thing is accessibility, right? A lot of institutions are sprung up, but the fact that people cannot access, you know, these institutions or these um, people, right, that's the problem, right? People who have studied about rape cases, people who have sat down and studied and done their homework on rape cases and how to abolish rape cases in a, in a society or in a culture, right? They, they come and form up an institution and they know how it works. They know how the SOS comes. They know how all these things work, right? And that, that's the first thing that we need to create. And there has to be an institution. I know there are institutions, but there has to be an accessible institution where ladies can report a rape crime and even can be investigated and investigated properly, right? And secondly, we have to keep making ladies aware. People, ladies need to be aware. I remember, I keep telling most of my ladies, be aware. You have to be conscious. You have to know, like, you have to, Take, you have to be able to, you know, call a spade a spade and, you know, fight back and, you know, go on social media. You can't wait for 10 years or five years or two years, right? Then it's not, you know, in America, I watch movies where when the lady reports a rape crime, you know, they go and do tests and, you know, find some um, uh, e evidence of rape, right? This is, yeah. this is something that's meant to be really quick. Immediately, you... See someone you you see you 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 have evidence that he, he raped you or this you immediately go straight to the authorities or go straight to that institution or call that institution that certain things have happened right so this is how I think that it can stop this is how I think we can if, first of all educate the women educate the men and then find a way to always have justice against these things right and find a way that people can also have that conversation I know I even if in, in, regardless of how you want to say, I know at least 100 men that want to rape now will think about it twice, right? Because there is already a voice out yeah. there. There's already you know a that, voice on social media. There's already a voice in the media. You know, that's where the conversation is at the moment. I know we're going to move on to the next topic shortly, but just to round this up is, you know, we have gotten to a point as a society where we're saying, why are we constantly putting the burden of this on women? Um, so, you know, like you're saying, you know, women need to report quickly and so forth. But uh, ultimately, you know, we need to get back to the stem of the problem, which is, like you said, rape is not a mistake. Um, so I know there's a big movement at the moment to say, you know what, we, these men need to know and understand um, that you're, you're not going to get away with this. Uh, so it's sort of a, a balance yeah. um, awareness. But... Uh, you, you, your work focuses on gender equality, African culture, and black power. It is, is your main focus. Uh, why did you choose um, these, these genres? Uh, quite easy. I'm black, first of all. Um, and <laughs> and um, uh, what I think circumstances made me pick my uh, my form of expression or what I represent or the kind of conversations I start I stay up, right? Because uh, I grew up not in a rich home. I didn't have everything. So I grew up with a lot of, you know, friends who, you know, went the other way. I grew up with um, a lot of police brutality. I grew up with, you know, I grew up in basically like, I don't want to say ghetto because it, it looks very, it sounds very cliche, but sort of like it gets the ghetto of Lagos, right? So there are a lot of things I witnessed, right? First of all, as a young black person, regardless of how you want to put it, in any scale, in any form, your voice is the least heard, right? Coming from, I used to call Nigeria an old people's country because as far as you're like 40, 50 years above, you are like, you, are, you have all the wisdom there is in the world. Right? But people have forgotten that even the young people are, you know, are springing up and having, you know, they, they have ideas, they have conversations they want to bring out and they want to respond to, 
right? So this became my addiction. This became something I, something I began want, I began wanting to talk about. You know, black consciousness, black power. Who is the black person? Black representation. How do you recognize the black person? What is the black person to you? Is he a criminal? Is he a normal person? Is he alive? Is he dead? How do you see us? How how do you how do you um how do you place us? Are we human beings or are we animals? Right? You need to know the placement. So that's where I come from. Right? And then I have a sister who is a lawyer. And every time she comes back home when I was um, in school, and then she goes and says, ah, there's this feminist conversation we had in class. And she's telling me about everything that how, you know, her lecturer was telling her this and that. And I became interested in feminism. I started asking myself, what exactly, what exactly, what exactly you know, represents a feminist? I thought feminists were, were only women who fought for women's rights. But I now understood that, you see, it, it, it's just about, you know, Hung, being hungry for equality, being human, particularly the same opportunity you have should be the same opportunity next to you, regardless of gender, regardless of race, regardless of age, right? So that became another form of my conversation about giving women the right to, you know, the, also the same um, opportunities as the men, equal rights and equal opportunities, and that brought me to this my um, one work I did called the King's Diary, right? Where people were like quite controversial because I. I sort of painted a woman in the regalia of an Oba king, right? The Oba regalia, right? And that was me saying that, you know, in those days, right, men go for war, right? And when they come back from the war, they crown them kings, right? It, it was like, it was like, ah, you know, you've led the people to freedom and to, to greatness. You are now the king, right? But we also know that in those days, women too went for war, right? But when they came back, were they crowned kings? No, they were not crowned kings. So this was my own way of... So I felt that was... That, that also added to this narrative that women will be a lesser, gen, a lesser race that, or a lesser um, gender than the men. So I decided to you know, make my, put my voice in and I decided to go back in time and crown that lady who went for war and came back a king. So this kind of conversation that we keep having, this kind of conversation that we spring up from my app is directed to trying to make change and make the society even much more conducive for everyone. Incredible. I love it. And I, I, I can tell Thank you express yourself. It, it's really genuinely coming from, from it, deep in your heart, uh, from a beautiful mm. place. And I guess that's why your work is so successful, uh, because you're Thank expressing you. an emotion that you've lived and experienced. And, uh, you know, which takes me to 2019, last year, when you won the Future Africa Prize uh, for Visual and Applied Arts. Tell me about that moment. Did you expect to win? Were you excited? How did you feel when they said your name as the winner? Ah, <laughs> you, you know the funny thing? I, I, I played the video before we went on live. Uh, yeah, because... Because um, my sister took a, a recording of the video. Now, nah, it, it was surreal. I I don't think that was the one standing on stage. I think was like the second part <laughs> of me took experience. over, took over, and then when I came up on the stage, I was like, "Wait, whoa, did I just stand on stage?" <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, it was it's an experience, an experience, and it, it 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 basically opened a lot of doors for me, you know. Yeah, it, it, it did a lot. It did a lot. It inspired a lot, of, a lot of um, visual artists over here. A lot of visual artists. You have no idea. Did it impact your career in any way? Yes, yes, it did. Yes, it did. Do you know how many publications I've had? I and mean, then you have like the future award uh, winner of visual and applied arts. It's, it's dope. <laughs> no, it is dope. It's a major yeah. It's such a win. It's, it's a amazing. Win. It's amazing. I have an award. It's amazing. Exactly. <laughs> but you know, you know, you have to pay it forward. So if you were to pay it forward and you were to nominate somebody for your category this year, and you know the person obviously has to be between the ages of 18 and 31, who would you nominate for the visual um, for the visual and applied arts category for 2020? Uh, you know, I had another conversation where somebody was saying 2020 is an unforgettable year. It's an epic year. It's a historic year. So who do you think uh, would be worthy of, you know, sort of the grandeur and the, uh, you know, the, the importance uh, that comes to winning that award in a year such as this? 
You are going to make me start looking for. <laughs> I don't, you don't want to choose. You don't want to like choose. No, I don't want to choose. Right? Yeah, yeah. But, okay, you but, can list one or two but, people. I, you can list your top two. Eh, okay. <laughs> My top three. Top three. Your top, top three. three. Fine. Okay. Uh, uh, Arim Zay. Uh, he's an amazing artist. Uh, basically, one of the things he's done mm -hmm. is that he's impacted and influenced loads of young artists. Um, and every time an artist comes to me, you know, there's always a reference of Arinze's work. Oh, Arinze's work. Oh, Arinze's work. You know, he's he he with a group of young of artists, you know, spoiled of these young artists, you know, want to work and they want to pick art as an as a career. So Arinze, um, Iron Fair, Iron Fair is amazing. That's all I can say. He's she is amazing. You need to see her works. Um, uh, then Ayogu Kingsley. Okay. Um, Ayogu Kingsley because um, he he works he, he he works like I do, right? He's he, he's more on the activist side, trying to you know call out change, trying to speak about certain things that's happening around the world, and you know trying to ask questions and answer questions. That's where his focus is. So Ayogu Kingsley definitely are in there and I don't care. The, the rest, I, 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 I've not seen that work this year, so no okay, forgive so me. Just, just to, well, you know what? The, we're only, although it feels like this year has been going on forever, we're only halfway through the year. So, um, yeah. surely, you know, you never know by the time nominations do open, uh, maybe more work from other people will have come out. You, but, you, you no, see, just, I, 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 see, I see this year as half full instead of half empty. That's right. Right. A, a, a lot of people think, oh, you know, this year has wasted. This year has gone. This year has, you know, this year is a lot of problems, a lot of um, troubles, a lot of trauma, right? But when you look at the good side of it, you figure out that, number one, black people are being heard now. Yeah. Two, right, there is a huge movement on weight, which is amazing. Because I remember the last movement, it came and left. Then Me Too happened. I put my voice in Me Too. Me Too came and left. These things come and leave. But this is, I think this is going to stay for a while, which is good, right? Because the conversation needs to keep going on, right? Thirdly, you think of it and you see that people are still connecting with their family members, with people they love back, right? The world was on a fast forward before, before coronavirus came. We were all really just moving and working and working without any goal or any movement and now you know the world is saying pause look at everything look at what's going on look at your family look at your your father look at your mother look at your husband look at your wife right and appreciate them right so the, the, so instead of looking at it as, an, as half empty people need to see it as half full people need to see the good things happen and actually try to put their own conversation in that good thing i think yeah, I think that's how I see it. I see you it have here. such an incredible spirit. I love your energy. You, you always bring, <laughs> up, you know, a, a good vibe, and that's really important. And now, last before we go, um, we know that in July we'll be um, celebrating people who've contributed positively during this period. So it's called hashtag Beating Corona Heroes. So there are people, some people who volunteered, worked in the front line. People who've just been involved in one way or another uh, to try and bring a little bit of joy and make this, you know, this period where the world has been affected by COVID a little bit easier for their neighbor or their community. Um, if you were to nominate one person for this, who would it be? Um, so that's just somebody, you know, it can even be somebody in a different African country, just any young African who you feel has done something and you felt like, you know what, it could even be an artist and you could feel that, well, this person's artwork spoke during this period. Yeah, um, Nelsi Makamo. Okay. So Nelsi Makamo is a um, South African artist. Mm -hmm. One thing I appreciate his works for is that uh, his works keep you in this state of, I am happy I'm African. That's how it is, right? In, while there is a lot of news coming up on my feed, then his own post comes up and I just smile because it's all about oh. love. It's all about Africans coming together, making a stand, you know, and that's what Mandela pushed. So I feel, I, I, for me, I, I used to see him as the artistic Mandela. 
because he's wow. preaching love regardless of the situation we, the whole world is in he's still preaching love and i think that's what you know that's one of the things we also need to pray to while wow, all these things are going on yeah so he is he he's he's an amazing artist and i think yeah i think i'm nominating for this that's so good. I need to look him up now. <laughs> 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 a little bit of love and positivity. Ah, you, you have to. Um, he, his works um, came out on the cover of Times Magazine. And Opa Wilfrey has one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. he, yeah, oh, he's so an he's amazing artist. Ah, he's a, he's a big deal. Come on. Okay. <laughs> right, so I'm late to catch on, but I'm going to... Now that I've caught on, thank you for bringing me up. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, definitely. Okay. This has been so dope. Thank you so much for your yeah, time. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you for your work, your commitment. I appreciate your uh, You're making such a huge impact. I love that. What is it? Yeah, so it's called um, A Joker on the Line. So it's basically, um, it's, a, it's, an, it's a painting, right, of a person on the uni, unicycle actually going through a line. So this, this, is, this, is a, this is a response to a lot of people who think, that you know black people are jokers black people are just or creatives are just wasting their time you know i, I know a lot of people saying oh bro very soon you know you understand that you're wasting your time that you have your comedian and then you figure out that you know you need to focus on what is really, what really matters like corporate jobs businesses and you know trying to understand that you are less of a person but this is me making that statement replying to that statement that we're all jokers on the line you know Enjoy the show. Eventually, we're going to get there. But we're going to give you a very good show before we get there. And this is me giving them a good show. <laughs> I love it. We're going to give you a good show. Yeah, we're going to give you a good what? show. Like, the bottom line is that we're going to get there. So however gonna you want to do it, we're going to keep it yeah. moving. Ken, thank you so sure. much. This was absolutely Thank incredible. you so much. Thank you so much. Day. I'm about to you follow too. you and about you to too. follow Nelson as well. So thank you so uh, much. Definitely. Thank you so All much. Right. Thank you so much. Everybody who tuned in, guys, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your data. I always thank you for your data. Um, and, you know, there would be no show conversation without all of you tuned in. So thank you very much. Um, I believe Temesan will be back tomorrow. We have so many more of these conversations lined up. You would never even imagine. Uh, just make sure you keep your eyes glued to the timeline so you know who's coming up next, which conversations will be happening next. I am Vimbai. You can catch me on at the underscore Vimbai here on Instagram and on Twitter as well. Let's keep these conversations going. And, uh, you know, make sure you stay safe out there and make sure you lend your voice as well to so many things and issues happening right now uh, both at home and abroad so uh, you know make sure you read up and you understand why people are outraged why social media is so so somber at the moment and how we can all use our voices and our platforms in our own little ways to make a change but until next time um uh, so it's tennis i'm holding it down tomorrow i'll be back the day after we're gonna keep the train moving bye guys <laughs>